Hello, BookTube. I have a bit of book news, of course. I was away on vacation. Frida and I were away at the old farmhouse underneath a, a brooding wooded hill. Total darkness at night with a sky full of a million stars. No light pollution anywhere. It was wonderful. We had a long vacation, and it was wonderful. I broke away from routines here, and even though I love those routines, it's always healthy to break away from your routines once in a while. Uh, and my host and I, we did follow the news while we were there. We, we watched the news about, you know, the hurricane and about um, another mass shooting and a whole bunch of other stuff. We watched the PBS News Hour religiously every night to sort of watch the news, talk about it, kick ideas around back and forth. Just wonderful and relaxed. And uh, one piece of news that that has broken just recently is book related, and we didn't have a chance to talk about it there. And that's that the shortlist for the 2019 Booker Prize was announced. I did a video about the long list, uh, and I made some predictions uh, with the long list. And now there is the short list, and the sh I wanted to, to I've got a, I jotted down the titles here of the books that made the list. I wanted to read them and uh, bloviate on them for a bit. First one that made the list was The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, and the next one was Quixote by Salman Rushdie. Okay, we'll get back to those. Then we had uh, An Orchestra of Minorities by Chigozie Obioma. Uh, we had Girl, Woman, Other by uh, Bernadine Evaristo. We had 10 Minutes and 38 Seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak. And we had Ducks Newberry Corner by Lucy Elman, the gigantic, uh, the most daunting book on the list. And those were, those are the ones on the short list. It's just, it'll be just a month until the winner is announced. Uh, and a couple of things on this short list confused and badly disappointed me. I do not understand why Margaret Atwood's book is on here. It is not just not her best work. It is not just not prize-worthy. You figure a long list might be to stir attention, but the short list are, are books that the judges have to consider legitimate contenders to win the award. I know they said that about the long list, but they didn't mean it. You weren't supposed to take them seriously. But the, a short list of six books, the, one of these is going to win. Any one of these is supposed to be, in the judge's mind, a serious contender to win the prize. And it's not just that Margaret Atwood's book is... The main thing about it is that it's bad. It's weak. It's, it's dumb. It's a little bit on the dumb side. I don't know that any American reviewer will use words like that, but I'd be willing to bet that the undertone of a lot of American reviews will be negative. Uh, and it does not... It, 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 I, I've read most of the, uh, the books that didn't make the cut, and it's not better than them. It's, it's, it's not better... It's worse than virtually everything on the long list. Uh, but nevertheless, there it is. And the same thing with Quixote. Quixote is a kind of note-by-note -note clever old man's literary game, you know, easy chair in the library parlor trick adaptation of Don Quixote. It, but, it, but it doesn't make any new or, or, you know, satirical or insightful comments on the changes from, from Cervantes to our day. And it doesn't make any insightful innovations on, on the book. It, it, I read it and thought, oh, this is an author that I have increasingly liked. I have liked him almost, I've liked each new book of his almost more than any other. They've certainly been on an upward trajectory. This thing was a doddle. It was just a left-handed exercise, much like the Testaments. So those two confused me. And then there were, there were two on the list that uh, you can tell even in their titles, but the books also bear this out, They're, that they are just shrieking examples of virtue signals. An orchestra of minorities says it right there in the title, and so does so does a uh, girl, woman, other, uh, and and the books themselves are agenda driven. They they are. Uh, I have now read both of them, and I didn't enjoy either one of them. I'd be firmly I firmly believe that no one will actually enjoy them, in the sense of enjoying <laughs> in the sense of enjoying a book, which is what. Uh, literary posers, it's what uh, virtue signals and purity testers, and it's also what a lot of judges tend to forget. They tend to forget that that's what a book is for. They move the goalpost so far that they're reading a book like Quixote or an orchestra of minorities, and they are flat out not enjoying anything. That that feeling on the inside of this book is making me bubble, it's making me light, it's making me giddy on the inside. That feeling of enjoyment is universal. If you're reading a book and you don't feel that, it's the book's fault. <laughs> and and no one is going to read an orchestra of minorities and feel that. They are going to read it and think, well, 
I now know when I'm reading this book, I now have a short list of six items, boxes to check, of ways in which it, this book is important to mention in my year's best list or at a literary party, not because I enjoyed it, which should be the only box, but instead because it does this, this, and this, it has this kind of representation, it has this kind of diversity. <sighs> Those two books, I... I Literally speaking, they certainly don't belong on the list. There are lots of books on that long list that are better novels than these, but nevertheless. And then the other two books on the list that made the short list are noteworthy for two separate reasons. Doc's Newbery Report is on the list, and that's noteworthy because it's a long and baggy and shapeless and very uh, rhetorically challenging book. And the interesting thing about that is not so much that the, that the, the prize judges have it on there. I know the the, uh, the judge panel this time around, and I I can un, almost un, unconditionally guarantee that only one of those judges read this book, and that she said, this has to be on our list. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. I'm sure that the mechanics work out that way for prize, for prize judges just in general. Uh, but it's not just that. It's that, I mean, this thing gets more and more of a spotlight the, the lower the number gets. By the time you're at a short list, there are readers all over the world who will buy all six of these books because the shortlist was announced. And those readers are going to be presented thereby with a book that is unlike anything that they're likely to have read. And that's, I think, really good. That's really interesting. That's one of the things that I, that I like about literary prizes is that they, ri they raise the profile and the spotlight on whatever they feature. And we have to remember, it's a thing that we don't, we don't always remember really well here on BookTube because we're the island of misfit toys. We have to remember how hungry people in the in the normal world are for intelligent book recommendations. They're incredibly hungry for it. If they'll go to an algorithm for it, then you know how hungry they are for it. They're incredibly hungry for good book recommendations. And the Booker Prize shortlist is that for a lot of people who are going to be presented with this book that is weird and that I bet a lot of them will like. It might make better, more adventurous readers out of a lot of people, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, and the other book that we need to mention before we wrap up this video, is 10 Minutes, 38 Seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak. I love Elif Shafak. I think her books are incredible. I thought this book was incredible. Uh, and But that's not the reason that we have to mention it, and that's not the reason why I've saved it for last. The reason why we have to mention it, and the reason why I've saved it for last, is because it's going to win the Booker Prize in October. So, as I said, in my long list video, it's going to win the Booker Prize in October, and you heard it here first. <laughs> okay? I know that probably Ducks Newbury Morton is the odds-on favorite because it's so strange, oh, and also people might want to give it to Margaret Atwood, even though prizes shouldn't be given. Prizes should be earned. It should be really hard to win a prize. You shouldn't have to just show up. I feel the same way about Hillary Mantel. If I weren't sure that her new book was going to blow everything else away, I would say, you know, be wary of someone who looks like they're, they're entitled to a prize. There might be a sensation on this particular judging panel that Atwood and Rushdie are entitled to prizes, or they're in te at least entitled to be on the shortlist. These two efforts by them are not. Uh, but it doesn't matter anyway, because Elif Shafak is going to win. So, I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> so, if I remember, I will list the books down below. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up, but I will be back. <laughs> Thank you, book two.